Hi there, Scorpio. Welcome to your end of March 2024 general tarot update. It's Serena here. <laughs> wow. That's the story of your life. <laughs> That's the story of your life, Scorpio. Everything has to be a drama, right? But not really, because this can be holy. Holy mackerel. Well, okay. I'm going to pick an additional card. <sighs> Let's... Okay. You know what I, the first thing I thought of when I picked that four of pentacles, I'm wondering if the, if there's something to do with an inheritance and this has nothing to do with anything else that I was thinking about, uh, in general, I mean, even astrologically, I'm not thinking about anything. I'm trying to think if there is anything, but I, but the reason that I said it is because the four of pentacles can be this financial security, but there's these cards like the five of cups that can be mourning the loss of someone. Um, the justice card can be a legal situation. Seven of wands, standing your ground, five of wands, um, a lot of infighting, a lot of people kind of getting in the fray together. So anyway, the heart of the matter is the eight of swords. This is a card of feeling like Maybe you can't do anything, feeling paralyzed in your life. Um, it's interesting with this particular depiction, which is very faithful to Rider Waite with the exception of the figures. They have a lot of diverse figures compared to Rider Waite. And uh, it's called the Modern Witch, I think it's called Modern Witch Tarot. And, but you know, if you, you have to blink and then you think, oh, wow, that's not right away, but it looks a lot like it. But look at the pool underneath her feet. It's aqua. It's water. It's not, you know, blood. So what that suggests to me is emotion, maybe emotion that is being, oh, what is that word? I was going to say uh, spent or wasted or like excess emotion with Scorpio, you are a water sign. Okay. Now the swords relate to the mental side of life, but really these two aspects are, are, um, intertwined because the mind and the emotions work in tandem. Your mind thinks of something unpleasant and then you're in, you have these, uh, reactions to that, to that memory that are not so hunky dory. And there, so there is that connection. So something may feel like it is keeping you, um, holding you back from doing what you want. And there's nothing you feel like you can do about it, but you, but it actually, you hold the key. This is, this could be programming that came from somebody else. Usually we say in childhood from parents, but at some point in adulthood, a person either rejects that conditioning and says, I'm going to uh, rewire my brain. I'm going to, you know, whatever they might say, I'm going to go to therapy. I'm going to get a chakra adjustment, whatever it takes, I'm going to take action. I'm not going to just, you know, say, okay, that's a wrap of my life. Um, in the past position, we have the justice card. This is a card about, um, fairness, but also could be like a literal legal judgment. Um, that is, that has been rendered you know what? It, it, oh my gosh. You know what the, these cards actually, cause I'm looking at the higher message card. Um, and we have the Knight of cups. 
this could be a situation where maybe you are divorced and you're afraid to go back into the dating scene. There's somebody here who really likes you and who's a really good person, but you're still trapped in the past. You're still trapped in those, the mind games of the past relationship. Um, by the way, the justice card is connected to Libra. I'm just going to leave it right there. <laughs> if you were involved with a Libra person, uh, usually I don't think that Libra people are, you know, the worst kind of people to deal with, but you know, you never know, you might get that bad one. And, uh, the air signs, you know, the, the, the swords relate to the air sign. So in addition to Libra, we could be talking about Aquarius and I could see, uh, that squares off to, to Scorpio. So, so you might be attracted to them, but they, you might clash with them as well. And Gemini is the other air sign. And there might've been mind games played, <laughs> but anyway, um, the Knight of Cups can be an offer in love. So there might be something um, that is given to you, like let's say this is an inheritance issue and it's coming from a good place, but because you have had these bad memories, you are seeing the dark side of it. And it's not to say that there might not be something lurking behind it because it's just like in a family situation, um, sometimes they say, don't accept that offer from, you know, and even on a, on a legal level, because maybe it's a trap, um, and you could get more money or something like that or whatever. What crosses you is the five of wands. And this is a card of conflict. Uh, other people are mixed up in all of this. And the thing about Scorpio is Scorpio is ruled by two planets. It's ruled by Pluto and it's ruled by Mars. I think the Pluto connection is what a lot of us widely sense and, you know, link to, to Scorpio, but the Mars is not as acknowledged, I feel. And I was saying, you know, I kept saying, you know, I think of Scorpio people as fierce. And I really think that that's one of the reasons why, because I made this connection between Scorpio as being vengeful. And then I was like noticing in my life that, that Aries tends to express those same sentiments. Like if somebody does them wrong, like, you know, having that warrior spirit of like, Hey, you know, wanting that person to get their just desserts. And I think it is that kind of tit for tat mentality that is associated with war. If we didn't have a tit for tat mentality, we wouldn't just automatically strike back. If someone struck at us, um, we might say we're going to be the bigger people. So that's, that could be what happens where you're tempted to jump into something Scorpio in this, um, last period of the month, the last half of the month that puts you in that combative stance. And, you know, you, this is, oh, here's another thing. Um, Scorpio people have, Pluto now in your fourth house of home and family. So this is one of your ruling planets. And so it can have that thing of like the power struggles within the family you grew up with. In addition to uncovering things from your childhood and trying to kind of um, maybe heal from them. Uh, so that is a doozy as well. And that can lead to a lot of unearthing of these unpleasant feelings. And I, and I do think that I do think that, um, Scorpio people are well equipped to deal with that, but I'm just saying, I'm not saying, I'm just saying what's coming in is the five of cups. And really what came into my mind is delayed grief. 
So we have two fives here, one that is more combative, the wands, the fire energy. And then we have the cups, which is part of you being a water sign and getting all up in the feels of the situation. And this is oftentimes what happens in life is that it's easier to get angry than it is to be sad. It feels more empowering to be angry. And sometimes people have a habitual response to sadness by getting angry instead of expressing sadness. And um, it can also be too, you know, this is what is so horrible about probate matters is that sometimes when you really are grieving the loss of someone, you also have to deal with family members who kind of like disappoint you because of their treacherous behavior, their greed. And then you have two losses, the loss of the illusion of this person and then the loss that you're dealing with. So it's all about acknowledging that and getting to the heart of it. The, The five of wands is that tendency to just distract yourself with anger rather than to deal with the truth of the situation. The outcome is a seven of wands. I did pick an additional card just because this is not that this is a negative card, but it's like standing your ground, something that you're dealing with. Somebody may not be, you may be demanding fairness, but you're not, it might be a hard won battle to get it because other people may not be um, willing to do so. I, what came into my mind is pushover, pushover, which I kind of, you know, when I get that word, when I get something in my mind like that, I think, well, no, that's not Scorpio. But I, I was reading somewhere about, you know, how intuition, it can be like things come into your mind. So I'm starting right. Cause I have the moon in Virgo. So I have a tendency to analyze everything that I think, which is not necessarily a good policy. It's better to kind of, um, honor that what you're, what, and just if in this context, like me, you know, doing these readings just to say it in case there's somebody that needs to hear that. So yes, I do believe that there are Scorpio people who might be pushovers in their personal relationships simply because um, not not all Scorpio people are the same. And some Scorpio people are more gentle than others. They may be more trusting than others. Usually Scorpios have that, have trust issues and they, you know, will not, um, necessarily be that open about people in their life. They may kind of, that's one of the reasons I think Scorpio is associated with being secretive because they feel they have to kind of protect themselves from people who would, um, try to get one over on them. So I picked an additional card and it's actually a good thing. So if you are dealing with some kind of financial matter, and this could even be in the workplace too, where um, maybe you are not getting paid what somebody else is getting paid and you're not having it, that you're able to triumph. But also I feel like, as because it might be some other people trying to make you feel that you don't, you don't have the right to, um, to, to demand certain things or what have you. And you kind of are not, um, allowing other people to tell you otherwise. Um, you know, you're standing in your own sense of self and sense of self-worth. So, uh, with the four pentacles, It's about being in control of your money. You're not going to allow, I mean, the person's almost like, you know, clutching it to their chest because they're not allowing other people to take it from them. It doesn't have to be greed. Sometimes this, this is a card of somebody who's being excessive about money where they're being a little bit too, 
covetous or whatever you want to call it, protect self-protective. But I feel like it can also be the person who's a good steward of their uh, finances. So no matter what other people are doing, they are still being able to pay their bills and have that security. All right, Scorpio, that's what I have for you. I hope that this resonated. If you would like a private reading with me, I have um, I, I have like um, all kinds of readings, like you know the transits for the next uh, twelve months and your natal chart analysis. I have a combo of those two that is at least two hours in length for a special price. I have um, love readings, career readings. You can find out more information at the link below. I'm at rainandmoonastrology.com. Thanks for watching. Bye.